Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Balone Speakers, episode 39. And again, we are welcoming back our special guest, uh, Soggy. How are you, Soggy? Yeah, pretty, <clears throat> pretty chilled out. Doing pretty good. Yeah. And so. I'm, I'm uh, coming in from Yokohama which is west of Tokyo, and you are in Chiba, which is east of Tokyo. And the Olympics but, are raging all around us. But bleep nowhere. <laughs> With um, something raging around us. Did you say COVID? I don't know. But you're not so far from the city, really, right? Not really. Not really. Well, you know. But, you know, for, for a person who likes harsh noise, this area gets really bloody quiet. You know, I, I, I've gone through evenings where I've, I've gotten home late <clears throat> and I'm literally tiptoeing because I don't want to wake people up who happen to live in the area. That's how, mm -hmm. that's how but bleep quiet it is around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not that quiet. I mean, we got a, we got a university um, just across, just across from here and uh, tons of university kids and uh, we got all kinds of crazy crap around here, to be honest. Yeah. So you're not that quiet. Mm. Yeah. Um. Well, we, we even had a we even had a um, <clears throat> some kind of garbage disposal explode a couple of years ago. I thought it was an earthquake. You know, the, the windows were rattling and everything. It turned out to be an explosion about one kilometer away. Why am I telling you this? Why? Hmm. Stupid stories. So someone okay. tried to someone tried to put like their bicycle in a I guess I was just trying to relate it to the idea of, you know. Garbage incapacitating sound, you know, which is what that would have been mm. uh, for, a, for a brief interview, shall we say. Yeah, um, talking about noise be, in general and sound and volume, I think it's all uh, yeah. moving nicely. At, at some at some point, uh, a semblance of structure will enter into the things that I'm trying to say, but suffice it to say, anyone who has watched the first 20 to 30 seconds of this, it will all make sense in mere moments. Trust me, mm. because, okay. you know, um, you should, trust me. On that note. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, incapacitants present no progress. Dedicated to Takia Synapse Sakaguchi. Thank you very much. Sorry, I, I can't keep a straight face with myself on the screen. Uh, right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to leave the screen. <laughs> All right, but now we can't see you. My apologies. Yeah, sorry. All right. <laughs> so today's this broadcast. Sorry. I was just going to introduce it while you were giggling. <laughs> Today's album is the uh, Noise Classic from 1994, Incapacitance, No Progress. All right, Jason, why do, all right, Soggy, why did you choose this album? Well, <clears throat> the choice, the, cho <laughs> the choice, the choice should be pretty obvious to anyone. Who knows incapacitance? No progress. That's what it is. That's what you get. With incapacitance, you are guaranteed no progress whatsoever. Incapacitants have released thousands upon thousands of albums. Well, let's just say more than 10, more than 20, and possibly even more than 30 or 40. A lot of albums, <clears throat> and things change. They do change, and you will notice a progression, so to speak, in the way that their sound is developed. But this was a kind of statement that they were making at the time of the release. Um, the project had been going a solid 15 years already, if we were to date the project to its beginnings, <clears throat> quite possibly in 1980, 81, or something like that, 80, 1980. And this album would have been released in, gosh darn it, 
94. 90, thank you. I was going to say 96. Yeah. So yes. Um, now it is not, in fact, an album proper. It is a uh, like a <clears throat> compilation of hits. Um, so you know, remixes of previous released material plus one brand new track. That's what you got with, with no progress. Um, so things going back to some of their earliest recordings, long awaited, being the opener, uh, right through to brand new stuff. Um, a, a sum total of five tracks. That's all you got is five tracks. Demonstrating incapacitance, complete refusal to progress in any way, shape, or form. But to be honest, when, when I first encountered this album and looking at the cover art and possibly not knowing that it was, um, you know, a collection of tracks, uh, you know, that had been released before, uh, I actually thought they were kind of making a political statement, you know. I actually thought that they were making some kind of political statement. Look at the album art, come on. No progress with our society and everything we've done. What have we really done, ladies and gentlemen? What have we really done? Come on. That's right. But okay, but maybe he was just, he, they, in capacity, they're two people. We haven't mentioned that yet, but it's two people. <laughs> Sorry. It's two people. <laughs> Jason, do you remember, um, so the first school we worked at together back in the late 90s, and there was the oldest um, student in the school was this guy that was like 93, 93 years old. I, I want to say his I, name. I do remember him. I remember him very well. I want to say here. his name was Tochio. I'm not sure if that's right. But um, I think so. I think you got it. Yeah. But he used to just when you'd enter the classroom, he would just be sitting there and like gesturing toward himself, just saying, "No progress, no progress." Wow. <laughs> you know, he. You know, I mean, he he would have been born well before this album was released. So you know, he may have been the inspiration for this album. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It says dedicated to Takuya Synapse Sakaguchi. Hmm. But perhaps it was dedicated to, what was his name? Toshio, perhaps? Toshio, yeah. Right. Toshio, Takuya, you know, kind of, you know, kind of similar. <laughs> Do you, by any chance, remember his last name? No, no, no. It I, just, I just love that, uh, that defeatist <laughs> attitude. <of> no progress. <laughs> 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 nothing yeah. you do, nothing you say or do will result in any progress. Um, now, now, let me just say one more thing. And because this has to be said by me, because I'm saying it, uh, which is that <clears throat> no progress, maybe it's a political statement. Maybe it is a statement on the non-progression of the band or the, the intent to non-progress of the band, of the project. Sorry, I keep saying band. I maybe the band is the wrong word. Anyways. Duo. Duo, project, noise unit, couple of dudes, <clears throat> a banker and a public servant. Um, that may be what it is, but what it also is, it is a total kick-ass piece of sonic oral awesomeness. It is just freaking killer, man. It's it's totally killer. <clears throat> From Fallen Banker, sorry, let's start again. From Long Awaited through to Fallen Banker, <laughs> through to Inverted Yield Curve, through to Libra Was Dead, Since Then He Has Gone to Morgan Stanley, through to BIS Conspiracy. This album, it says, that's why it's here, okay? I don't care about any progress or not or statements and all the rest of it. It's just a good album if, if you like noise. And, and who doesn't like noise, really? Think about that. Who doesn't like noise? 
It's all noise. Since the beginning of time, since before the beginning of time, the Big Bang, come on, the big noise, come on, it's just noise. That's all we're doing is just, we're just sitting here making noise. Okay. So then. Oh, um, um, go ahead, please. Well, I mean, me uh, is it a good time to ask you, so when, when did you first discover the incapacitance and Oh, incapacitance as a project. When did I discover that? Yeah. Um, you know, having my face here is really distracting. And you can so I'm just going to slap the visual. Or you can just yeah, clap the visual that. and we'll talk. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so, so, <clears throat> so I would have I discovered them uh, probably in my, towards the end of high school, I guess. Um, at that time, I was already familiar with noise, even harsh Japanese noise, though it wasn't really a thing to that point, I believe. Um, every weekend, I would go to this shop in Toronto, <clears throat> kind of semi-downtown Toronto, it wasn't quite downtown, run by a gentleman named Robert Oliver, who ran a label called Freedom in a Vacuum. And he also had a shop called Hypermedia. Hypermedia, very short-lived shop. So I'd go to this shop, which just had everything in the shop was awesome. I wanted to have everything in the shop. But I didn't have that much cash. I just had my like my, my high school cash or money I earned from whatever the hell, you know, like cutting lawns and <laughs> now, <laughs> is this the story you talked about when you first talked about um, discovering angel and heavy syrup. In the previous episode, same. Uh, no, that was a different shop. That was called Seekers Books. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but actually, you know, you can walk. You know, if, if you're a walker like myself, you could walk straight down Spadina from Seekers Books. Was it Spadina? God, gosh darn it! Honest ads, if anyone knows anything about Toronto. Okay, you could walk straight down, and eventually you'd hang a right at Queen Street, and you can kind of get to Hypermedia kind of deal if that means anything to anyone. Okay. And it was kind of in a kind of more like a residential area, to be honest. Uh, so Robert Oliver and his partner, and we would just kind of hang out and he would just keep introducing album after album to me, you know. <clears throat> and anything that was in the vicinity of this kind of music would have been called power electronics. So it didn't matter if you were Merzbau or uh, the New Block Haters or Borben Amagas or Magus or however you pronounce them. It was all called power electronics and like, so, so like, what, what's this stuff? Well, that's power electronics. How about this one? That's power electronics. Now, you know, right now, power electronics has a, has a very specific meaning and it, it does not include the new block, the new blockaders. It does not include Merzbeck. But at that time, <clears throat> for Mr. Freedom in a Vacuum, it certainly did. And, uh, you know, at that time, Japanese noise was getting distributed and was being recognized as a thing uh, for example, the ghetto getty gay 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 and uh, Masana and a violent onsen geisha. They were actually getting <clears throat> even onto college radio and stuff. And it was getting played, and I wasn't really into it. I wasn't really into it. It seemed it didn't have what it took, you know. At that time, my go to was something like the new blockaders, actually. Um, a specific label, it, it was like a two minute track, um, which didn't even, have, didn't even have a title off the, oh, I can't even pronounce it, the German compilation, Ochrin Schrauben, wow, fuck, I'm gonna destroy the name. Anyway, that was the stuff I liked, this kind of epic, huge sound. And uh, I knew Merzbau, I knew Merzbau, but I didn't think of him as a noise person. I thought of him as, you know, experimental industrial, or if you're Robert Oliver of Freedom, Freedom in a Vacuum, it was Power Electronics. Anyway, um, so yeah. So I heard this stuff and I just didn't think it had enough depth or weight, whatever you want to call it. But I'd walk into the shops <clears throat> and I would see um, incapacitants. Um, their their first, first CD. So I guess it was released right after this one, Repo. Um, so I would see it there, it was sitting there. 
And actually, I thought I might just share the, the cover of that with you. Just give me a second here, folks, while I do this. Um, here we go. If this works, if this doesn't, blame Dave, not me. Mm. All right. This is so distracting. Sorry. But okay. Yeah. Okay, there's, there's incapacitance. Fumio Kosakai on the left. Mm. T. Mikawa on the right. Mm. And, um, you know, I forgot how this slideshow is arranged. Yeah, okay, there it is. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so, it was this specific album, <clears throat> Feedback of NMS, from Incapacitance. Now, you take the name, Incapacitance. You take the artwork, and this kind of, you know, interesting, mysterious title, Feedback of NMS. You know, at this time, Japanese noise was kind of regarded as, I don't know, silly, comical, stupid, with people like Violent Onsen, Geisha, Masana, Gero Gede Gege. Uh, a lot of the time, people like to play up the fact that it was just silly and stupid. You know, I hate to say it, but it's true. Um, and it just didn't leave an impression. But this album, it had a certain level of decorum and presentation just from the artwork alone in the name. It made an impression. It's like, okay, these guys, this is some serious shit. This is none of that bullshit. None of this Hana Tarashi crap. No. You know, here's, here's the other part of it, you know, just wiped out whatever. You know, you, this, this looks like a statement, possibly even a political statement. You know? They seem to have something to say. Uh, so after weeks or possibly months of walking into the shop and having Robert Oliver tell me it's power electronics, uh, I finally bought the damn thing. I don't think I bought it from his shop, sorry, uh, but I bought it from some shop. And I took it home, pressed play, <clears throat> and the first track comes on I remember the title. Was it Curse of Sesku? Shoot. I can't pronounce these names, but it was it was a mind-blowing track. It had everything that the Masanas, the Gero Gede Gege Gays, the Violons, Onsen Geishas, and the Hanatrashis did not have, which was depth. Uh, which you can read another way of saying it had a musicality. So I know Mikawa is uh, philosophically opposed to associating, so the guy on the right, he is philosophically opposed to associating the idea of music and noise. He feels that noise has a power when it's divorced from music, and fine, I can accept that. But the fact is that what incapacitants brought is they brought a undeniable depth that, you know, you could simply say uh, is, is musical. It's, it's, and if it's not musical, I don't know. It's, um, it, it certainly isn't just damn noise. It was uh, the most powerful thing I'd heard in my gosh dang life. Um, you know, <clears throat> I, I mentioned before this band called the New Blockaders. Well, they had they had the depth, they had the density, they had this massive sound that was incredible. But they didn't have the one thing that is the defining uh, um, characteristic of incapacitance. And that's that the, the shit is fucking harsh as fuck. Harsh as fuck. Excuse my language, but it just is. So that's it. Uh, sucking you in through the depths of the sound and then, you know, the harshness does the rest. It just melts your face off. You know, melts your ears off. You know, and the and it just seems to get deeper and deeper. You know, you, you're in, you're in you're into it within the first, you know, fifteen seconds. You're hooked, and in the first minute, you're you're you feel like your whole body is being you know submerged. <clears throat> By the fifth minute, you know, you're gone. You're just gone in this enveloping beauty and so, that's what um, 
So for you, it, it wasn't about like the backstory about them or anything. It was just purely you thought their sound was. I didn't know shit about these guys. I mean, and I only knew what the album art looked like. It looked pretty cool. And the name sounds pretty cool, you know. Yeah, it is. And according great. to Robert, Al Robert Alver, they're, uh, they're, they're power electronics. Um, you know, and at this point, to this point, Mersbau had released albums that would have been considered absolutely kick-ass noise, but I just had not heard that yet, actually, oddly enough. I actually avoided him, to be honest. Uh, or, yeah, actually, I'd, I'd, I'd heard uh, he, Mersbau released, um, uh, it was a five cassette set called Porn Noise, Porn Noise, you know, and Mersbau doesn't want people to remind him of the fact that everyone associates Mersbau with two things, noise and porn. Now he only wants to be about noise, and maybe now it's about, uh, you know, animal rights. But before it was animal rights, it was porn rights. <laughs> porn rights. <laughs> yeah. Stand by your porn. But okay, um, that's what he was all about. Sorry, Mersbau. That's what it was. He'll probably sue me now for saying this. Um, but yeah, where was I? Mersbau, porn. So yeah, I, I'd heard a fair few pieces of Mersbau, and they just... They weren't, they weren't on that same level. They didn't have that energy, you know, that energy. Sorry. Mm. It's terrible. But, but um, he's a big, he's a much bigger name than them though, right? Yes, yes and no, yes and no. I mean, incapacitance has been around about as long as first Bell. Um, and in my opinion, in my opinion, I feel that it was people like Incapacitance and Kijo Kaido that pushed Mersbau into harsher territories. I feel that they pushed him, he didn't push them. That's my opinion. He may be super genius of noise as far as, uh, you know, bringing in all kinds of, you know, awesome elements into noise and stuff. But I feel that I don't know. I'm, I'm just talking out of my ass here, which is all I ever But do. no, I'm just... Um, but um, but all, all, well, it's, I, I, it's so clear that. that all these guys were influencing each other. Hmm. And yes, of, co of course, Mersbau is the one person who could quit his day job and can put down on his tax form a noise artist. He may be the one human in the universe. But isn't it also he was from a wealthy family, Mersbau? You know, that's something people don't talk about, and I don't talk about, and I don't care. It doesn't really matter. Um, that, that, well, no, I guess I, I'm just saying... I, I never heard that, honestly. That, that, that could no. be true. It's just something that's never interested that me to know. <laughs> but I, but I, I thought the reason that Mersbau was able to make a living as a noise artist is simply because he, <clears throat> he's wealthy, so he's not really making a living doing it. <clears throat> I don't know where I got that idea. Didn't you tell me that at some point? Well, regardless, let's let's just say, okay, let's just say that I don't know he he was I don't know cast out of the family earnings and all the rest of it, you know, because of his noise associations mm. or something. I don't know. He could still live off being a noise artist. He would he would be the only person in the planet that could actually make a decent living, <coughs> probably. I don't know. Possibly not. You know, depends on what you could you would consider a decent living. You know, like you know, drinking cheap beer all the time. Mm. Okay. Just Anyways. just just a moment. So now, so the reason I'm asking that is, um, so my understanding of who's who in the noise world really comes through you, right? So, um, but I feel like just in general, I see uh -oh. hers cows. <clears throat> I see Mersbau's name out and about more than I've ever seen the incapacitant. So, of course, um, of course. I, I I don't know why I'm why I'm challenging that. It's so stupid. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, but, but, just, but but then I'm asking: have, have the incapacitants have they been gaining ground on Mersbau over the years? Or I don't know. They were all they were, they they had always gained the ground on Mersbau in my bank. My bank. Hmm. Um, yeah. But, um... Well, speaking of banks... Well, I will, right, I will let's say, talk about I will their... say this. All right. 
I will say this, okay? Mer Merzbau is, is such a household name in music mm. that he doesn't need noise people, you know? And uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, he went through a period where he was doing a lot of purely digital stuff. And as a person who has been known to use a computer from time to time, I know what that's all about. But it just wasn't his best stuff. Um, honestly speaking, let's face it. It's, it, it, it wasn't, it isn't, and it never will be. Um, you know, I've got a couple of collections here. <clears throat> Loop and collage. String and percussion. Now this, this, this is the, this is the real MERS, and that's before he got even into the real harsh stuff, you know. Um, you know he was kind of more like experimental industrial, but you know, that's, that is truly his statement. And if he gets back to that, I don't know why he would want to do that. Maybe because he wants to make no progress. <laughs> But, uh, you know, once, once he flipped into the laptop mode, a lot of people who were fans, a lot of noise people stopped paying attention. And I haven't bought a Merzbau album. Mm. Not one. Not a single one. Uh, well, I, well, I bought this one not too long ago. But again, this is, this is like a collection of, uh, like, outtakes from this classic stuff from, like, the 80s, right? But have I bought anything that he's done in uh, the, the thousands since 2000? Answer, no, not one album. All right, well, I'm, not, I'm not even interested in hearing it. Let's put Merz on the side. Um, because it's quite possible he's done some interesting things very recently. So, but anyways. Wait, well, uh, let's, I let's I talk about spend, our boys uh, tonight, incapacitants. Yeah, much better idea, okay. Yeah, so tell right. what, um, what, right. can you, what can you tell Just us? Rambling about, on randomly. Sorry. What can you tell us about their backstory, their lives? Because I, I think it's rather fascinating. Their backstory. What do you mean by that? What they do for a living. So you've oh. said you've said nobody makes money as a noise artist, or nobody makes. And yeah. and, and actually, well, you know, Jason Mikala has business. this one line that he that he repeats through interview after interview, and he's like, mm. "You don't." You don't get rich making noise unless you're Merz Bow, maybe. You don't get rich doing it. You can't live off this stuff. So get a job. Kids, get a job. And as a banker, as a banker, as like an in, like kind of an in investment, you, you know, broker, uh, I think he knows what he's talking about when it comes to finance. Trust this guy. If you're going to trust anyone with your finances, any noise guy, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I would trust the ghetto getty gay 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 with my money, but I might be willing to trust one person, and that might be Mikawa, actually. That might be him. Um, he knows what he's talking about. But what he what he always says is: look, what you need is you need financial support to support your come on, let's say it, your hobby. That's what it is. It's a fucking hobby. It's an awesome hobby, and that's what life's all about. But anyway, you need you need to support that. Um, okay, so I think what you're trying to say is you want me to comment on the fact that Mikawa is a banker. Mm. Here, here's a funny little anecdote I have for you, which is um, uh, a very good friend of mine who, who knows me very, very well, who I will describe as a friend who has known me for over 20 years, Japanese woman. Um, I explained to her, I was like, yeah, you know, in incapacitance, you know, this guy's a banker. Yeah. Don't you think that's weird? And she's like, no, how would that be weird? Banker? He works for like Mitsubishi? <laughs> of course. Mitsubishi? These guys are all maniacs. They're all those crazy maniac people. I'm like, okay, right. Well, how about the other guy? He's like a public servant. It's public servant? They're even worse. They're worse <laughs> maniacs. They're more obsessive, crazy, freaky people. Like, oh, right, right. Well, you know, did you know Hijo Kaiden? Uh, he runs a card collecting shop. Okay, enough, enough said. You know, in the opinion of this person who I know very well, uh, you know, obsessive personalities. That's what these people are. They're obsessive personalities. Naturally, a banker and a public servant only naturally 
would be the people who would be making noise. They could do other stuff. They could run a, you know, they could do a, uh, a sports card collector's shop or whatever. But anyway, these are the real maniacs. Obviously, obviously a banker would be a noise person or the other way around. That was her line. Um, so that, that was kind of interesting to hear. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess if you're a banker, you could potentially have the interests that make you a harsh noise god. Yeah. Anyway, I, I just thought that was quite funny. Um, well, because in general, most people well, I, I, I thought it was you, you think there's a, quite a gap between. I, there's got to be a quite do, a gap. People do, between, but maybe guys, maybe they don't. They, maybe they just, and they're hot, right? They just haven't spent enough time in Japan, and they and they don't and they have different ideas about what's what. Hmm. But I can get that, hmm. and I think any any fan of noise, any noise person, uh, will tend to be a person who tends to get into stuff a lot really hmm. into it. so that kind of otaku mentality or like uh possibly, possibly right kind of enthusiastic maniac fan mentality right yeah yeah stuff like that sure why not like for some other guys who work at the bank it could be like fishing or baseball or something but in his case it's just noise music right well he, i think he's a big baseball fan too and, he, and, he, and he's into um southern all-stars Hmm. And uh, Hawkwind, isn't he a bit? Is it? Is it? A, oh, oh, hell yeah, yeah. Well, see, I was a big Hawkwind fan, right? Yeah, Hawkwind, and um, yeah, yeah, all all that stuff, all that stuff. You know, I mean, it's not it's not that far removed. I mean, well, not it, in in my mind. There is a bit of a removal from Kraut Rock, but um, you know, like he often will mention Terry Riley and all those guys. It's not that far removed uh, from we talked about in the last episode. I was the last blown episodes I attended. We talked about Strawberry Switchblade. We talked about Drone and maybe Strawberry Switchblade, Rose McDowell and Capacitance, pretty far removed. Not really. Not really. You know, the endless moment, the endless harshness. You know, whatever. It's not that far removed from a certain point of view. That's true. Hey, sorry. Okay. Um, I've kind of completely lost track of what I was trying to say, but you know. Um, so, um, yeah. Part of the reason maybe they're not as known overseas as Merzbaum is because yes. they have because they have these um, very steady jobs that they can't leave for three, four months to tour around the US or tour around Europe. Right or they have they haven't done extensive tours overseas, whereas Mersbau has. Right, this is true. This is true, but again, I think Mersbau was also very well established in the side of experimental, industrial, etc. Music, like I said, like I was when I was uh, like a, I guess teenager, I was well familiar with the Mersbau name. I just didn't associate it with even when all these bands were coming in, these projects were coming in, Japanese noise itself became a word at that time. I didn't associate Merzbau with that. I, did, I just didn't. I, I, I associated him with the European contingent, actually. A mm. uh, more experimental industrial stuff. Uh, and to an extent, I still do. Like if, you know, like if you look at some of my favorite Scheiser that he's done, it's more in that vein. And it's really awesome fucking stuff, to be honest. Uh, the guy's a bloody genius, Mersbau. But, um, you know, um, what to say? So he, he was already very, very, very well networked in that whole vein of music, which has developed a lot as well. So whereas noise has always kind of been, you know, the, uh, the smeared at, sniveling little snot-nosed rat which is kind of what Hanatarashi means. So it's it's always kind of, you know, it's, and if, and maybe if you're a Mikawa, you're like, hell yeah, that's how it should be because we're not part of music, we're doing noise for fuck's sakes, fuck off. You know, that's my, that's might be what, 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 uh, what uh, Mikawa would say. So hey, um, maybe it all works out at the end. Maybe uh, certainly, 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 let's show a live clip. 
huh? Soggy, just to give um, give the un uninitiated idea, uh, give the uninitiated uh, viewers an idea of what uh, the incapacity okay. sound like and what their performance might look like. Um, Okay. You had a clip queued up, right? Yeah, some, I did some, actually. I did some, actually. Uh, um, exclusive footage, right? That our buddy it is. Paul it is. So this, back in the day. This is um, something that I, I I probably need to uh, contact the people who would be responsible for it. Uh, but anyway, in 2000, 2006, a person I know well that I've seen naked put together a show and it was called Fuck Off Sickness. And then my, uh, a friend of mine, uh, of ours that we know well, Mr. Grubel, he videotaped the whole thing and he put together a little video of it. And then he just gave it out to friends. Uh, but it's, it's releasable, at least, you know, the, the bits that, that might you know, have someone such as myself on it, you can Wait, cut that Paul, out. Paul put that together and made a CD? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, like pretty awesome, yeah. Wow. Here's a funny thing. Here's a funny thing, um, you know, like, uh, you know, my my partner at the time is like, she thought this was porn, you know, like, hey. yeah. Now, is that the date? Like, how? How? Why? What, he's clearly, he, what, what do you think he's doing? Does, does that really look like, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> no, Jake, Soggy, is that the uh, that date, 2006? That's the date of that concert? Or the, the date? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I so, yeah. Okay, so let me just give you a bit of a backdrop to that. Um, Sickness uh, wanted to do a show in Japan, or a couple shows, a few shows. And uh, it was going to be his, his sayonara, the sick sayonara, sayonara to Japan. Actually, he came back later, but at that time, he was of the view that he would never be coming back to Japan for various reasons. I don't know exactly specifically what his reasons were, but anyways. Um, so yeah, so we put together this gig. Um, some of the projects included, uh, we had Facial Mess, we had Government Alpha, Killer Bug, Astro Black, which is Astro, with, uh, yeah. There was Sickness, there was Slogan, and there was also Go Mikawa Fumio, Go Mikawa Fumio, uh, which is uh, Kohei Gomi of Pain Jerk. Gomi. Mm -hmm. uh, Toshiji Mikawa of Incapacitance, the main guy, Biobin. So that's Go Mikawa. And Fumio Kosakai, who's the second member of Incapacitance, therefore Gomi Kawa Fumio. <clears throat> and in fact, in this set, in this set, they were joined by none other, none other than Sickness. So in this set, it was Gomi Kawa Fumio Gudro. That's right. Gomi Kawa Fumio Gudro. Check that out. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. So here is Gomikawa Fumio Gujo. Uh, there might need to be a slight pause while I get this thing, you know, queued up, but uh, then we'll play it. How's sure. that, Dave? Sure.
Well, it certainly uh, brings back memories of those shows. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so that was, that was um, Go Mikawa Fumio with a little good as well. So excellent, excellent stuff. Um, I love how the cameraman just can't figure out who he wants to focus on. He wants to focus on, you know, Kosakai in rock star mode with the guitar, you know, but then here's Mikawa freaking out a little bit. There's the fans going berserk. I don't know, it's pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool shit. That's kind of how an incapacitance gig is. It's, it's kind of like, you know, there is no focus. It's just, it's just what it is what it is. Mm. Damn you, Trump. <laughs> Destroying a perfectly good expression. Yeah. But okay, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's harsh noise and it's, and it's good shit. So yeah. But usually it's okay. just the two of them, right? Oh, sorry. I'm going to have to turn you up a little bit. Oh. Um, so usually it's just the two of them. Yes, that is correct. Uh, incapacitance mm -hmm. is basically the two dudes. Mm. So the guy who was playing the guitar with his teeth there, that was, that's Fumio Kosakai. And right. uh, the guy on the right, kind of shorter guy, I think he was wearing a red t-shirt, that is yeah. Toshiji Mikawa. Yeah, T. Yeah, everyone calls him T. Mikawa. T. Mikawa. So he's he's been a banker true. for thirty or forty years, right? Yeah. And the uh, and uh, Fumio, the guy going nuts on the guitar, is a public worker. Public servant. That's public right. Public yeah. servant. So he whether he works at the ward office or something, right? Something like that. So Probably. just two, two, hard working salary men, and that's that's how they that's how they cut loose on the weekend. Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. Okay. Now, what, what I wanted to do now is um, go back to no progress a little bit. Go back to no progress. How's that? It ain't pretty good. Okay. No right. progress. No progress. All right. You're cut off, Dave. I don't know what you've been on, but you're cut off. No, right. I was referring um, to Toshio, our 93-year-old student. Oh, you know, I've totally forgotten that, dude. Man. I suck. All right. <clears throat> Let's just oh, go back to my little slide presentation. <laughs> Come again? Come Maybe again? he's still around in a classroom somewhere. Probably. Uh, 115 he's... years old. And uh... he, yeah, well, he would be. I mean, he was, he was, how old? He was 93, right? And that oh, was uh, yeah. almost 20 years ago, right? So more, he than, would be, more than 20 years ago. He'd be like 100 and. Yeah, he, he'd be up there in the age department. So yeah. I, I hope he's still kicking around. Man. <laughs> still making no progress, just like incapacitance. Yeah. That dude was trippy. Mm. All right. Um, now, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is just go back to the slideshow here for a moment. Go for it. Uh, here we are. Because I, I just have a couple more things to say about no progress itself. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I got to get rid of me because I hate me in this corner. It's so ridiculous. Okay, yeah. Okay, get rid of that asshole. All right. <clears throat> He's not an asshole. He's me. He's a good person. Okay. But let's go on. Um, there's Incapacitance. There is uh, that wonderful album that first got me into Incapacitance. Now, what are we looking at right here? We are looking at the liner notes. The liner notes to no progress. So let's just view these liner notes. Clearly, clearly. Ah, sorry. Clearly, Mikawa has a lot of things he wants to say. Don't you wish you knew what he was trying to tell, tell us, you know? We're talking like 5,000 words of text devoted to no progress. So what is he on about? Well, you see, what he, what he was explaining here, and it's very important for people who like noise, you should know this because this will give you deep insights into noise. So what he's talking about here is 
the best places to drink sake in the Tokyo area, whether it's Ginza, Shibuya, and all the rest of it. You better know that because that is key to understanding Norris. It's key. He also talks a little bit about pro wrestling because that, that is key to understanding Norris. Does he at any point in these extensive liner notes mention the music, the sounds, the noise, the harsh stuff that Incapacitus does? Yes, he does. He devotes approximately two or three sentences to the fact. So be happy. Now you understand what no progress is all about. It's all about Mikawa going around Tokyo, getting shit-faced. That's what it's all about, watching pro wrestling. Yeah. Now you know. Aren't you, don't you feel the better uh, for it? So I remember you always talking about what, what big drinkers they were. So both of them are big drinkers? I don't know, mm. apparently. Um, no, if you ever, if you ever seen the Kawa play a show, he, 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 he always plays sake. with his bottle of sake handy, but it's not a huge one. It's a, it's, 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 you know, it's a medium one, you know. Okay. But what's like the story? Minutes. Would, which one of them chipped his tooth on stage on a bottle of sake? Oh, that would have been Mikawa. Yeah. Yeah. When he was smashing his face into the piece of metal that he brought on. Yeah. That, that, was, that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, I think he actually said that that was kind of a, a turning point for him. He thought he would possibly drink slightly less during his performances after that, you know, because I don't know. Maybe he had a conversation with his dentist and the dentist's like, Mikawa, listen, I like you, you're a good guy, but you gotta stop chipping your teeth at these noise shows. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what happened. So I feel like uh, you and I saw them perform a lot um, yeah, back probably. in the day and you probably more than me. Um, awesome. Uh, um, but I felt like I hit a, a bunch of them. And you were often like screaming at them and jumping up on stage and stuff. So they knew you, right? <laughs> so what, well, was your, what was your relationship like with these guys? Were, were they sick of seeing you at their shows or what? Probably, very, very probably. I know that Koji Tano, may, may he rest in peace. He did, he did um, give me the honorary title, the, the third member of Incapacitance. And that... That was simply to acknowledge the fact that, you know, if there was anyone who, uh, anyway, I don't know, he was just joking, but yeah, there, there, there was, there was certainly, there were certainly fans, and I, 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 I would like to say, in my defense, damn it, that I'm not the only person who, 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 who really got into those incapacitous performances. A lot of people did, mm. but I was certainly one of them. And uh, yeah, um, you know what? What can I say? It's it's it, the 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 enthusiasm is contagious, and uh, I don't know. You're you're surrounded by these grinning faces of people going, you know, ape bleep, ape shit. Whether it's the people on stage, or the people in the audience, and of course the sound is intense. It's all about the sound, to be honest. It always is. <clears throat> um, you know, and it's kind of like you're 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 kind of channeling this elemental force, and it certainly feels or looks and feels as though that's what that is what is transpiring when you are at a proper incapacitance event. It's not just it's not just people making sound. It's a channeling of the essential noise that is existence since the Big Bang on. Mm -hmm. noise on. But I'm, I'm telling you, man, these guys, some people are tapped in. These guys, if, if anyone, if any persons were, it is these two individuals. Uh, with all due respect to your Masami Akitas and all the other noise geniuses, and there are many geniuses at this point, but these guys managed to tap in somehow. Um, when I have a memory that you got, I, I feel like just one of them was playing at an event that you organized. 
Um, so, so for some reason, it was just one of the incapacitants was there. And uh, okay. I remember mm -hmm. I was I was just ducking out to um, I remember you could like buy beers at the convenience and then bring them back into the club, you know, or uh, maybe sneak them back into the club. So I was just ducking out. You're a loser. I was just ducking out. And um, I think one of the guys was just warming up. And I remember just hearing you scream. I heard your voice just as I was going out the door. Your voice scream. <laughs> there can be only one. <laughs> well, there can. There, there can, can be, be only one. one. So um, who, do, well, who, do, you who know, do you think you were talking to at that moment? Would it have been uh, Mikawa or Kosaka? Well, you, you know, there's only one king of noise, and that king of noise is Jojo Hiroshige. Mm -hmm. And that king of noise is T. Mikawa. And that king of noise is Fumio Kosaka. And that king of noise mm. is Kohei Gomi. And that king of noise is Masami Akita. So there can only be one. Please so who, understand that. So who are you screaming at? Or you don't know? Probably it was Mikawa, but it could have been Kosakai. Kosakai is so lovable. Mm. I love that guy. He's got well, such I a, think it was Kosakai, actually. But he, he, he's always got this this grin on his face, like he, you're you're in on some yeah. joke. And guy. both those both those guys have performed at your show as the Incapacitants and solo, or I don't know. Can can you keep track um, of that in your mind? I mean, everybody was. I don't know. It's 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 hard to remember. Fans are always, um, always collaborating. Then I, I had solo. we had Mikawa on at solo. We had uh, we had yeah. We th there were a lot of different incarnations. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. It, so it was, there can be only I, one was meant ironically. There is no irony, Dave. Irony is dead. All right. So you're but saying yes. there is only one, but there's actually like five of them, but each of them is the only one. I don't know. You can you can you can you can you can analyze that very deeply, but I'm telling you, there's only one king. Okay, there can only be one. Think about that. Is this is are you still confused by this? There can be only one. Well, I'm glad that I remember. Whether that name is Timikawa or Kohei Gomi or Masami Akita or whatever the f there can only be one. So have those, have those guys continued at the same pace all this time? Because when you um, say the same pace, what okay, well, just because you know, like back in I don't know when was the height of our noise show going days. Uh, yes. 99 to so i'm surprised that video you, you just showed was 2006 that struck me as kind of late so from like 99 to at a certain point um right you settled down you should you stopped going to shows as much right for sure <laughs> yes um more stopped organizing them yeah okay uh all right when was still, the last still still plan to at some point when was the last I, noise show you organized? Together. The last sorry, no, the last noise show you organized. How long ago was that? I don't know. It was a while ago. Mm. It was a while ago. Yeah. Okay. What is your but, point? Well, I, I, I mean, just since, I guess I just assume since I haven't been going to those shows as regularly as we did back then, even before the whole COVID thing. But um, yeah. I mean. Um, so the incapacitants have kept up, you know, playing out regularly and putting oh, there. Yeah, I mean, you know, they they have lives, obviously. They do have lives. Um, and there are junctures where there's definitely more incapacitants and less incapacitants, or maybe more of just Mikawa. Recently, it seems there's been more of a, uh, Mikawa going solo a lot. Um, for what it's worth. At some point, they're going to retire, right, from their their day jobs, right? And then they could maybe tour Europe or something, you think? Who's to say? 
But they, they have been overseas a couple of times as the incapacity. Yes, they right? have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Where did they go? Um, well, um, yeah, they've been to the States. They've been to um, the UK. I don't know. They've been to different places, you know, Austria, even Austria, you know, hmm. all over, man. Yeah, okay. but, you know, like not. You know, okay. it's not like they're constantly touring, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just maybe it's something they say on their Wikipedia page or something that they can't they can't tour so much because they're held down by their day jobs. Yeah, I suppose. Just I, what I read. Yeah. A lot of people are held down by their their day jobs, so to speak. So you know, whatever. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Um <clears throat> Moving right along, um, yeah, there was there were a couple things I wanted to add to this whole no progress spiel, and I'm yeah, there were a couple of things. There were a couple of things, yeah, um, yeah. Um, so okay, yeah. Here, here's a, here's an interesting little. It's kind of a side note, but. Um, it, it was this weird experience I had. Um, you might know that in, in Canada, which is where I'm from, we have a project and they've been going since the 60s. And in the 60s, they weren't even kids in the 60s. They were like, you know, they were like, they were like in their 30s in the 60s. Uh, not all of the original members are still surviving because you know they're they're really old guys right and this is a project called the nihilists the nihilist spasm band they're really smart guys one of them said to me his name is bill exley he's like he says to me mikawa is a fucking genius i'm like what do you mean I, of course he's a genius he's a noise god so that's not what i mean i mean he's really fucking smart what do you mean he's smart i mean he's really smart we were like having these conversations about like James Joyce and shit. I'm like, oh, the fuck? So I don't know. Um, yeah. So Mikawa, there you go. He's he's a, he's a smart freaking guy. Wait, so and he, he has. Means, sorry. That means he was talking about James Joyce in English. Well, yeah. I guess Mikawa. He actually spent one or two years in New York, so his English is not that bad, right? Hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, that was a long time ago, but yeah. Uh, but let, let's just say that a that a well-read person of the Bill Exley persuasion describes Mikawa as exceedingly well-read. I'm like, God damn. Hmm. I don't know. What can I say? You know. Uh, you know. And if I told my my friend to whom I'm, I was referring to earlier, she'd be like, Yeah, of course. Cause he's a maniac because he's a banker they're all maniacs <laughs> yeah anyway maniac uh so yeah i don't know that was not really a really terribly interesting anecdote but um insightful you know. though right sorry um just no it it, it does uh, offer insight yeah to, to his personality it yeah it does yeah just, just a moment there As, sir just a moment. Hold that thought, please. All right. So, um, Mikawa asked you at one point why you were such a fan. So kind of incredulous. Incredul he didn't believe you. <laughs> um, he didn't believe what a big fan you were. No, it's just, it's just these guys are extremely modest. You know, like, um, sorry, I was going to pull the picture up, but they're, 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 they're very modest people, to say the least. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as they say, they just they just do what they like, and um, they Mikawa especially is perpetually bemused by the fact that there are people who are extreme fans. Um, and so one day, this is fairly recently. He, I, I'm I'm actually sitting right next to him. He's like, like seriously, seriously, like. What's your deal, Soggy? Why are you, why are you into our shit? 
to this extent. And I said to him point blank, I'm like, because I love you. And then he got embarrassed and that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> but <laughs> Did he blush? <laughs> Sorry? Did he blush when you said that? I don't think so. I don't think so. He was just more like embarrassed for what a ridiculously ridiculous answer that was. But, but I do. And in fact, you know, if, you know, one of the questions you get asked as a gaijin coming to Japan is why did you come to Japan? Why? People ask you that all the time. And I have so many answers revved up and ready, depending on the context, mm. that would be appropriate for the person asking the question. But the real answer is one word, Mikawa. <laughs> He's the reason. It's true. I told you, that moment when I listened to that album, um, <clears throat> Feedback of NMS, it was a life-changing moment. It was like I'd never heard anything this uh, totally bodily, um, spiritually, intellectually, uh, all-consuming in every way, shape, and form. I had never experienced something like that, but it really did. It consumed me in every way. And if I'm going to lay the blame on anyone's feet, it would be that Mikawa guy. But, in the, you know, in the loving. So, you know, that that is actually the reason. But, you know, it's like if I was to, if for the average person asking me if I was to say that to them, they'd be like, what the, f who is this fucking idiot? So, yeah, but yeah, that, that, that would, I would actually trace it to that. And, you know, Coming to Japan, I didn't intend to stay in Japan, but I did. Uh, and I've been here for over 20 years now. <clears throat> but it all goes back to those moments in my teenage years, listening to those first 35 seconds of that one album by Incapacitance. You know, that's it. It just blew my, it blew my mind and my mind is still blown. I can go back to that and I can listen to it again and I can re relive that every time. And it's, it's a mind blowing experience every time. How's that? Mm. Because it was recorded in real time. You can replay it and relive the moment. But yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely if I was to answer the question more coherently, why am I into that shit? It, it's simply because it, it, it just, uh, you know, rang every single bell and hit every single note, uh, you know, and there's a project that's gonna do that and that, that was the one, so yeah. Anyway, but a simpler answer would simply be, because I love you. <laughs> um. So at one point, yeah, I remember you telling me, I forget which um, yep. incapacitance album you were talking about exactly, but you had, you had a plan that you wanted to write a novel length sort of manifesto slash album review based on an incapacitance album, which I thought would be fascinating to read. And... Um, do you remember, were you talking about no progress and um, have, have, you, um, have you been working on this book? Number one, I, it, it probably wasn't no progress. It probably would have been that first album that I referred to feedback of NMS, NMS, uh, not no progress. Um, as stated, no progress is is significant as a representation, not representation, but representation of what incapacitance could mean or might mean in certain respects. But um, they have a lot of albums that I would describe as much better, actually, um, or just tracks that I would describe as way better. So I, I just go. To, it's a good entry point album, is what is what you're saying, right? I, I suppose. 
Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who, um, they like the bass. They like something heavy that will punch you in the gut. And a very large percentage of incapacitance recordings don't do that. It's just shit that just fries your ear holes. That's all it does. It's just shit that fries the ear holes. Now, if, if what you want is a punch in the gut, then don't listen to that shit because it's not going to do that. It's just going to fry your fucking ear holes. That's all it's going to do. But I love me some ear holes frying in the morning. And um, yeah, so yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily call that an entry point. Uh, a lot of people like other albums that they've done. Uh, I could probably share with you covers from that Scheiser. Here we are. Sorry, my apologies. There it is. I gotta get rid of this asshole. All right. <clears throat> Just give me a second here. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. So there they are. <laughs> there they are. This is yeah. Picture. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But okay. It's a nice time. Um, yes. Uh, no, well, as, as mentioned, um, it would seem that the consumption of alcohol does have some association with the band. And this, this album is like a kind of iconic album cover. Mikawa wearing a t-shirt that I believe he made himself, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, they're doing what they do on a regular basis. And uh, that album is called As Loud As Possible and has a little bit more of the, uh, their wider ranging sounds that would be at the proper entry point for a listener who would not be familiar with the band. So that would be the one that I would recommend as an entry point. Uh, however, if you're me, this is the album. Long awaited, fallen banker, inverted yield curve. Libra was dead since then. He has gone to Morgan Stanley and BIS conspiracy. This is the shit. What's great is um, every one of these tracks, their original incarnation is exceedingly great. I mean, the original incarnation is awesome. But. <laughs> hey, do, wait, Jason, do you know who <laughs> so dedicated to Takuya, Synapse, Sakaguchi? Who is that? Um. I, you know, it's one of those things I should have looked up, but because I've, I've been reading about this guy all these years, I thought he was some kind of, is he a scientist, possibly? Hmm. Yeah. Well, something, he, something for people to look, look into. Well, he's, I mean, he, um, he contributed a lot of, um, you know, stuff about incapacitance. He, he wrote comics about incapacitance. In that album, Feedback of MMS, there is his original comic, which explains the origins of incapacitance. You see, incapacitance noise comes from outer space, probably inspired by Sun, Sun Ra, right? Um, so, it, so a lot of albums that incapacitance released have liner notes by this guy, Sakaguchi. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually met the guy. Maybe I have. I, I wouldn't know that. I don't think is, I have. Um, is, is that Mikawa's home address? He lives in, he lives in Chiba. So he lives in your neck of the woods. Uh, he did. I don't know where he's, where he's, uh, located right now. But yeah, that would actually not be too far from where I am right now. Uh, but I don't know where he is right now. Can we go back to that one live photo you, you had of them? It's pretty great. Oh, the, the, the previous one. Pretty great you photo. Mean, um, a few back. Okay, just a moment. This one? No, no, no. The live one. Oh, okay. It's. 
Uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a good shot because you can see how, I mean, the crowd is just e eating up everything they're doing, right? <laughs> um, everyone Taking a lot of pictures, yes. Yeah, everyone has the recording devices out. Um, yeah. I always liked just their kind of phys physicality. How, um, let's see, how Ko Kosakai is, you know, rather tall and big for a Japanese guy. And um, Mikawa's kind of, like, I always thought they had a kind of Laurel and Hardy um, thing going on. That kind yeah. of added to the charm of their performances. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. <clears throat> uh, oh, oh. oh, yeah. Wait, can you, can you go back to that? I, I like looking at the, the live shots. Wow. Can you go back? Yes. Yeah. Sure. sure, sure, sure. Like, okay, like a shot like this. I mean, that looks like it's overseas, right? I mean, is that in, is that in Tokyo? I think that was in New York. Okay. Is that there been more? Possibly <laughs> there no fun festival. Possibly. Okay. possibly. Uh, yeah. All right. Wow. Look, I mean, people are eating it up, right? Hmm. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice action photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. The one thing I didn't mention was, um, yeah, but maybe, maybe it's actually not worth mentioning at this point, actually, but... Um, I just love, if you just look at, the, these are some selected album uh, track titles from their, from their albums. <laughs> at the top, you, sorry? Mutual fund expl explosion. Yeah. <clears throat> Selling mutual fund by the pound. <laughs> Let's rent the space of bank branches to the mutual fund company. <laughs> yeah. Company never obtains the loan, but it defaults. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are I, those are just great, great track titles for harsh, harsh. They, well, they are. They are. Yeah. I, I mean, go, going back to the very first album, or yeah, an early, very very early album, uh, Paolo one, two, and three, respectively. This is released in the early 80s. And uh, there it is. Irrevocable letter of credit <clears throat> is in there. So it, it would have started there. And somehow that, that inspired Mikawa to continue on with uh, similar themes. Uh, you know, it, it's clear that you know, I, I've asked them about, about these things from time to time, you know, like, uh, what do you think of Samurai Bond? Well, he says, I don't want to buy Samurai Bond. It's, it's very clear. He's, you know. Um, oh, so these are actually his honest opinions about banking issues. Probably. Probably. It's, it's probably best not to... Uh, to analyze it too much, but um, yeah. <laughs> head of the group on the fifth floor. Yeah. Even stupid can be director. Wow, yeah, great yeah. titles. Yeah. I, I like the fact that <clears throat> you know he he's a big pro wrestling fan, but being that it's incapacitance, they can't just mention pro wrestling. It has to be term structure of professional wrestling. Yeah. That would be the way to go. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, that was just a little, uh, yeah, a little bit of comment on some of the track titles that they had to say uh, without actually having anything to say about it. But if you check out, if you check out um, Mikawa's uh, Twitter account, he has a lot of things to say that are that have nothing to do with noise and have everything to do with politics. Uh, he seems to be fairly 
if not active, highly critical of um, certain policies and all the rest of it. You, you get the sense that, uh, you know, maybe certain of his ideas come through in the titles of the Incapacitance albums, but um, he's kind of dying to say a lot, a lot more, a lot more actually. And uh, you can read into these titles if you want, uh, or you can actually check out what he has to say right now on his Twitter <clears throat> after the drunken interview. Yeah. Um, so for a noise, so for a noise aficionado like you, when you go to a show, like an incapacitant show, can you recognize the tracks they're playing or no? Does it, does it just, was, was, was that a joke? Um, no. Well, because, you know, like there, there, there's no way in hell that they, have any songs that they play are you kidding me come on oh well, i mean what you're showing us now are track titles right right but when they perform do they try to play those no of course albums? not are Never. they replicating any album or every no, every performance no. is just yes the improv hmm. yes it is yes yeah. i mean that's what i thought but i mean i'm i'm asking no, but it would it would it, it would be pretty awesome if they went back and they were like, yeah, let's 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 do Kosakai, let's do uh let's do inverted yield curve one more time. But no, no, definitely not. No. Mm. Yeah. So for like a noise fan that would have every incapacitance album, is it more like you're collecting the artwork than like sitting down and listening to all the tracks and really you hang your head around each album i mean i think it's just consumed and enjoyed different from other kinds of music right i suppose you know like if you're if you're mikawa it's it's not music first of all yeah mm. but um yeah that's a that's a difficult question to answer um i don't know who knows who's to say uh there <laughs> i yeah that that's that's a ridiculous question dave <laughs> well, fair, sorry fair enough yeah i mean i just um... yeah um you know um uh, <laughs> that's fine if, 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 if that's your what, answer what, the question what was fine. what was your question again that's fine uh yeah yeah. Well, I mean, um, I guess I, I'm just wondering if there's some like hyper, like noise otakus who like know every track by heart, even though it's just pure noise. And when they see them perform, like, oh, that's um, that's well, no, 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 because the, the, they are definitely never, ever performing the same thing. Mm. Never. Mm. Never. No. It's okay, always... But, yeah. But like but, free jazz guys, even though every performance will be different, they'll still, they'll still be performing a piece, right? Like one yeah, of their no. kind of trademark pieces. But you're yeah, saying that, yeah, that that doesn't yeah. go on here at all. Okay. Um, that, that doesn't go on for, uh, I would probably say 99.9% .9 of the noise. So, mm. yeah, mm. It, it, it just doesn't, you know, mm. um, yeah, definitely not. Yeah, <laughs> but, but they, but they <laughs> still, it's, it's, they still go little... through the steps of like naming the tracks and, you know, having tracks on the album, you know? Like yeah, the album, well, like why isn't the album just 40 minutes of noise with no cuts? You know, like why do they, why do they make it tracks? Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's certainly more interesting. I mean, um, uh, 
a single track is radically different from another single track. They, they, they certainly don't sound anything alike. Hmm. Um, but, you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, people, you can approach it so many different ways, whether you want to do the same goddamn thing again and again, or whether you want to do variations on the same thing, or whether you want to try to do an album that, you know, varies massively from track to track, you know, whatever. But but the, the only consistency there is, uh, yeah, where there, there is no, there are no tracks that are done as, you know, specific pieces and we're not going to redo. I, I, I can see that when you have lyrics, when you have lyrics, right? So, so for example, <clears throat> as a comedian, we have the Nihilist Spasm Band, right? They have songs because they have lyrics, that's all. Without the lyrics, uh, it would just be free of improv, right? So, <clears throat> I am grateful to you, Mother Canada. Mm. And as for the many things you have given to me, mm. always for the other places I don't want to be. So we'll, we'll... is for the times that you were always on my side. So J Jason is Bird... for the happiness. That has filled my heart with pride. E is for the English. That is our only official language. R is for Elig Elizabeth Regina, our queen. Um. E is for the other. <laughs> That's all I said. Okay. So yeah, I, I remember those songs. Um, well, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do an because episode he, about those guys. Because, because they have because they have lyrics, but without that, no, mm -hmm. absolutely not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, that that yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, keep in mind that I am asking for the uninitiated viewers, right? Uh -huh. People want to know. Our viewers want to know. Um, Rest right. assured, the answer is no. <laughs> okay. okay so well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for episode 39 of Lone Speakers. We've been discussing the 1994 Incapacitance album, No Progress. And uh, yes, Soggy, what would you like to say going out? Okay, so I actually had no original plan to play any tracks from this album, but why not? Let's just go out with one track. So this will be the third track. Um, it's kind of, to my mind, it is the pinnacle, but it's relatively short. I mean, if you're going to listen to Incapacitance, what you want is you want a proper full-length track. We're talking like 15... 20 minutes of pure harshness but that is just going to obliterate your ability to hear, think, breathe, and exist. However, there are moments when they just get it right in a relatively, you know, incremental length of time, and that was done with a track called Inverted Yield Curve inverted yield curve. Now this is the no progress version. There's the original version, which is great and which is harsh, but the version on no progress is greater and harsher. And um, it just basically sounds like the sounds of just, you know, burning your fucking face off. That's what it sounds like. If you like that sound. If you don't like that sound, maybe you don't want to hear it. But if you'd like to hear the sounds of burning your mother fucking face off, check it out. Inverted yield curve. That is the Shizer. All right. Thank you for listening. Soggy, thank you for joining us. And all right. 
it's a wrap. Or let's uh, let's play let's play a bit of this.